Hey, what's up YouTube? So in this video, I thought we'd go through what happens if you make too much money off the sports books. Mexico, all I'm saying. And don't get me wrong, that's a good problem to have, right? 99% of people, they lose money sports betting. So the question is, what happens if you're in that 1% that beats the sports books long term? What's gonna happen to you? And I'll tell you right now, sports betting is a little bit of a rigged game. Sports books do not like winners. So I've used over 50 sports books and fantasy sites, Prize Picks, FanDuel, DraftKings, Caesars, BetMGM all of the popular books, as well as some of the smaller ones. And I've been a pretty profitable better. You can see in 2023 and 2024, I made over $150,000 each year. So I'm gonna explain to you, if you're making money off these greedy sports bet books, if you have an edge and you're winning long-term, what are they going to do to you? So if you enjoy this type of content, please like the video, subscribe to the channel. I love this. I love beating the sports books, helping other people learn how to beat the sports books. And also feel free to comment with any questions you have. I'm happy to answer. But I said earlier, sports books, they don't like winners. It's not a fair game. And that is absolutely true. But I do want to lower your concerns a bit with saying I've used over 50 sports books. I've never been banned and I've never had my money stolen. There's been a couple sports books that have gone out of business. It's taken me a second to get my money, some of the smaller ones. However, I've never had my money stolen, and that's really not something you should be worried about. Maybe if you're betting on, you know, your neighbor's website, some illegal offshore bookie that's really small, they don't care about their reputation, maybe then worry about your money. But FanDuel and DraftKings are $10 billion companies. They're not stealing your money. They're heavily regulated. The US is super regulated for sports betting. They can't just steal your money. That's not how it works. Your money in FanDuel is very, very safe. Okay, so that's just one thing I wanna mention because a lot of people ask me like, hey, I've made a lot of money on FanDuel. I'm a little worried about if they're gonna steal my $10,000. It's like FanDuel's a $10 billion company. They care about their reputation. They're not just gonna steal your 10K. So long story short, that's not something to be worried about. However, what sports books and fantasy sites will do is they'll cut down your maximum betting size and then some will even limit how many bets you can place per day. So for example, there's a fantasy platform in the US. It's become increasingly popular. It's called Prize Picks. And I used it over, you know, probably six months, made $10,000 on it. So pretty good, but it's not like I was taking all their money. It's not like I made $100,000, only $10,000. And you can see what they did right here is I used to be able to play each entry for $400, each fantasy entry. Now they tell me, hey, the max you can do is $5. And then on top of that, they tell me, hey, your max daily amount is $10,000. And also it's not even anywhere close to $10,000. They only let me do five plays per day. So on prize picks, I can only do $5 a slip and five dollar or five different entries per day. So prize picks is kind of at the extreme. They limit how many you know, plays you can put in per day, as well as the maximum amount you can put on each play. I used to be able to put down $400 on each play. They cut me down to 25 bucks and then five bucks. Now, on the other hand, you'll see some people on social media posting $10,000 plays on prize picks and all of them are unprofitable. Prize picks is known for being one of the toughest books in terms of limiting profitable customers. So when you see people on social media, oh, I'm so confident, I'm so good at sports betting, slamming plays for $1,000, $10,000, they have no idea what they're doing. The normal limit on prize picks is $400. So these people are so bad at gambling that prize picks has actually increased their limits to let them bet $1,000, $10,000. So you wanna be careful because it's very misleading, right? If you look at social media, the you know intuitive thing to think is, hey, the people putting down the most money are probably the best sports bettors because they're the most confident in their plays. But there's almost no sports books in the United States that are gonna get, let you consistently slam plays for $10,000, $5,000 if you're beating them in profitable long-term. And these books aren't stupid, right? They know each customer, how much money have they won or lost. 
So that's just something I think is important to consider. So basically every major sports book and fantasy site has some degree of betting limits on profitable customers, but some books are more aggressive than others. So prize picks, the fantasy site I just went through, I can only place five plays per day for a max of $5, which is super aggressive. I mean, I basically don't even have an incentive to use prize picks. But some other books like DraftKings, you'll see right here, I tried to place this wager. They're not letting me bet whatever I want, but I can still put down 103.11. So I'm still able to get down at least, you know, some action that makes it compelling to use this sports book. And some people may be thinking, okay, well, why don't all books just take all their profitable customers and lower their betting limit to like two cents? And the reason is, because that's a great point, is payment for information right? Books are constantly taking bets and they're using that to adjust their lines and shape their odds. So if you look at like a sports betting line movement chart or a sports book, the way they work is they'll take bets and they'll know which of their customers are sharp and profitable and they'll adjust odds accordingly. So for example, if all of the sharp action, all the profitable customers are starting to bet on, you know, some player prop, the books can adjust that player prop accordingly and ideally make more money off the rest of their customers. So this is called payment for information. And it actually is similar in trading. So I started my career in trading and it's the same thing in trading, right? As a trader, at a you know prop trading firm, we would trade against hedge funds who we knew were really smart. But what you could do is use that as information. If all the smart hedge funds are buying this one stock, then you get you know a signal that hey, this stock is probably undervalued. We want to buy it. So payment for information is why books have kind of differing max betting limits and is important to consider because some people will say, well, I don't want to use any sports books if they're all going to limit me to $5 and I can only place five plays per day. But again, prize picks is at the extreme. They're very aggressive in terms of their limits. There's a lot of other books that I've been limited for years, but I can still get down a few hundred bucks on every play that I want to, which means it's still compelling to use the book and make money on it. So long story short, to kind of sum up the video in a sentence, if you're a profitable better, if you're making money off the sports books, you're gonna get limited. Your bet sizes are going to be cut down and it doesn't matter how you're making money. You could have your own model. You could be doing correlation, arbitrage, EV betting, middle betting, all these different sharp profitable strategies. If you're winning long-term, you're gonna get limited. DraftKings will know if you're up a million dollars on them, you're not gonna be able to sneak by them and make a million dollars off DraftKings. And is it fair? I don't know. You can decide that for yourself, but limits are a part of the game, which is why I always recommend for new sports bettors, get as many books as possible, right? You don't only want to use prize picks. This is one of the worst books for sharp, profitable players. So ideally you use a bunch of sports books. Some may have more aggressive betting limits than others, but still, you know, I've been limited on most of these sports books for the past few years. And I'm still having a great year this year, and I'm already up over $50,000 sports betting. So long story short, limits suck, but they're part of the game and don't get discouraged. You can still make money, even though some of these books are gonna lower your max bet sizes.